Begin by obtaining the needed materials and chemicals for the TiO2 paste preparation. 10 milliliters of ethanol, 4 grams approximately of titanium dioxide powder, and 2 to 3 grams of detergent. Measure out approximately 4 grams or 4,000 milligrams of the titanium dioxide. As a note, measuring below or above the 4 grams will not have a significant effect on the paste. Preparation of the titanium dioxide paste can now begin. Carefully take the weighed out titanium dioxide and carefully add it to the vial. Take the pre-measured 10 milliliters of ethanol and add it to the vial with the pre-weighed TiO2 powder. Add two to three drops of detergent to the vial with the TiO2 powder and ethanol. The detergent used in this video was simple Dawn dish detergent. After adding two to three drops, close the vial tightly and shake vigorously until evenly mixed. The TiO2 paste should have a relatively viscous and slurry consistency. Next step is to prepare the electrolyte solution. To begin, take a small amount of iodine crystal and gently break into smaller pieces. This will facilitate the weighing process. Carefully weigh out 0 0.0124 grams of the pure iodine crystal, or approximately 12.4 milligrams. Once again, having a few extra milligrams of iodine crystal will not affect the electrolyte solution. Now, add the iodine crystal to a vial, mm -hmm. followed by 10 milliliters of the 0 0.1 molar iodide solution. Careful when adding the pure iodine for it is a very small amount. Set the iodine and iodide solution on a heating plate and place a stir bar into the vial. Set the stirring setting to maximum and a temperature of 50 degrees centigrade. Carefully warm and stir the mixture.
after about 10 to 15 minutes, the iodine solution should be completely dissolved. Carefully remove from the hot plate and cover and set aside. Ensure to remove the stirring bar. Before preparing the cathode or the anode, we must determine the conductive side of the ITO glass. Begin by setting the voltometer to measure resistance at about 200 milliohms. Test each respective side of the conductive glass. There is no measure for resistance, thus we will flip the glass. A resistance measure of 0.7 to 0.9 indicates the conductive side. Upon our second attempt on the other side, we can see that the measure of 0.9 appears on the voltometer, indicating the conductive side. The glass on the right, once again, we can see gives a measure of 0.9, thus is already facing up on the conductive side. Begin by applying our tape. Leave a two millimeter gap on one side and a one millimeter gap on the side parallel, respectively. These gaps will allow for the alligator clamps to attach when we will take our voltometer, voltiometric measurements once our cell is fully constructed. Shake the TiO2 paste before every use. After determining that the conductive side is facing up, apply a small amount of the TiO2 paste to each cell. Carefully, with a straight edge, spread the TiO2 paste over the ITO conductive side area. Now allow to air dry for 5 to 10 minutes. After allowing the TiO2 paste to dry, carefully remove the tape off the edges of what will form the anode, taking special care not to scrape the TiO2 deposited surface. After removing the tape from the anodes, they're ready for the heating process. Begin by setting the heating plate to 500 degrees centigrade. Place the anodes on the heating plate and begin the 10 minute heating period. The anode will be heated for 10 minutes at each respective temperature. Slowly decrease the temperature by 50 degrees centigrade at every 10 minute interval. Repeat the process until you reach the final temperature of 50 degrees centigrade. After heating for 10 minutes at 50 degrees centigrade, turn off the heating plate and allow the anodes to cool for 10 minutes before removing. We now move on to preparing the cathode. Ensure that the conductive side is facing up using the methods shown previously. Begin by taking a graphite pencil and applying high pressure and circular motions. This will be the carbon source and which will ultimately form the cathode.
continue applying high pressure until there is a significant graphite deposit. The desensitizing process of the anode can begin. Take a small amount of the desired dye and gently place a few drops on the TiO2 deposit, just to saturate it, after which allow 5 to 10 minutes for the dye to completely dry on the TiO2 glass surface. After the dye has dried on the TiO2, take a very small amount of tissue paper and gently saturate it in ethanol. Carefully wipe the edges of the exposed glass with excess dye. This will allow proper measurements when the full cell is constructed. When completing this step, Take special care not to disturb the TiO2 surface. After the anode, cathode, and electrolyte have been prepared, the cell can now be constructed. Begin by taking a small amount of the prepared electrolyte solution and carefully add a few drops to the dye sensitized anode. After the electrolyte solution has been added to the dye sensitized anode, take the graphite deposited cathode and place the deposited side onto the dye sensitized anode and electrolyte solution. Carefully take the anode and cathode with the electrolyte solution. and add a small binder clip, which will keep both the cathode and the anode tight together. We can now begin taking our measurement of our disensitized solar cell. Here we can see the anode side, followed by the cathode side. Begin by placing the red alligator clamp to the cathode side. Connect the black alligator clamp to the edge attached to the anode. When attached correctly, you should begin immediately to see a voltage reading. If you have a negative voltage meeting, reading, that can indicate that the anode and cathode connections have been switched. Peak values and stabilizing values should be recorded.